Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Tangle Deep Dawn of Dragons where we are in recovery mode here. Uh, I went ahead and dumped that last, uh, the, the character that we restarted as at the, at the end of the last episode because I forgot. Uh, when you start a new character you get 250 free job points toward that character's starting job and we didn't really want to have, I didn't really want to have 250 sword dancer job points on a character who's not going to be a sword dancer. That feels wasteful. Uh, so we're going to build a new character here from the ground up, put those early job points towards something actually useful. And a couple of people asked for a tougher, tankier character, possibly, hoping that I would then be able to avoid the, uh, the sudden explosive death that happened last time. I think that's a pretty okay idea. Um, also, there was some interest in a spellcaster, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a tougher character for this run, and we'll try a more pure spellcasting build on the next one. Uh, just spoilers, I suspect I'm going to die a couple more times. Uh, so I think that we're going to go for an Edge Thane to start. Uh, this, the Edge Thane is a not really a super tanky class, although it's, it's a little tough, but I want to pick up some of the Edge Thane abilities on our way into Paladin, which is shield-based and very, very, very tough. We might branch out to grab some other things. There's some cool abilities in Gambler, like uh, Cheat Death, which is pretty neat, but also some things like, um, where is it? Here we go, Blood Deaths, which allows you to suddenly gain 50% HP, but then uh, bleed for 52.5% HP over the next couple of turns. This is a good way of getting out of a scrape, uh, as long as you can stabilize afterward. Uh, but for right now, let's let's take Edge Thane and we're gonna learn some interesting stuff. I actually think this is one of the coolest jobs. Um, you know what? Yeah, we'll we'll come up with a random name here because nope, I can't. <laughs> we can't do Alexa. That's gonna lead to devices in a lot of people's apartments getting turned on. Yeah, sure, Kasumi. Because uh, it's weird for me to read dialogue that has the name SB in it. Just uh, all right. So what do we want to take this time? Toughness is a fair amount of extra HP. I don't remember exactly how much it is, but I do remember that it's quite a lot. It builds up to be quite a lot over the course of a run. Uh, quick Step is a, a no-turn, one-square move that is fine, but like, for the relatively low level of value there, I don't know that I want to have it on my bar. Uh, it's just, there's an organizational cost to having more abilities, right? Uh, I still really like third, uh, Thirst Quencher. Food Lover is sort of similar. It makes all your food better at whatever it does, and if you mostly use food as healing, then it makes your food heal more effectively. Uh, Scavenger, of course, is interesting. Better loot is always good. I think more champions with greater rewards is also kind of interesting. Why don't we take... Why don't we take Toughness and Thirst Quencher? We're just going to lean way into this being survivable thing. So the Edge Thane is uh, is a kind of a weird thing. The, a lot of the abilities are based around this idea of songs. You begin a song, and then you level up and refresh the duration of the song by fighting with enemies. And as the song levels up, it gains not just more powerful effects, but also uh, a larger, like a broader swath of effects. So, like, for example, let's go have a look at one. Uh, the Song of Endurance. When you first put it on, it just gives you 10% parry and block. But when you, uh, when you take or deal damage, or you block, or you parry, you can cr uh, grow it in intensity. And once it gets to level 2, it also gives you elemental resistances. And once you get to level 3... It gives you a 50% chance to ignore garbage on the ground that would damage you, like the fires uh, that are caused by the Guardian lasers, or the sludge, pu sludge puddles caused by a dying sludge elemental. Um, it's definitely a thing we will be learning. We're, we're probably going to end up taking almost all of the abilities out of Edge Thane, but I'm going to start us with the Song of Might. There is no defense that is better than offense. Hopefully we'll be able to keep that in mind as we build this very defensive character. Also, movement abilities are good. Dash forward for a distance based on your current song level. Increases next regular attack's damage by 25% per song level. That seems like a good pair of starting abilities. And what did they give us equipment-wise? A wooden claymore that seems like it's seen better days. It's a sword, so of course it has that parry chance uh, stuff. And it is a two-handed version. 
Uh, we are obviously going... We intend to be using shields. Let's have a quick look in the bank. What uh, what shield did I leave in here? I, th I thought I... Nope, maybe not. We probably picked up a shield that I intended to leave in the bank, and then I didn't get around to putting it back in the bank. Well, you know what we do have is... No, that's a one-handed sword. Do we have any good two-handed weapons in here? I guess we don't really need two-handed weapons. There's a... Um, there's a powerful incentive to use two-handed weapons as an edge thane in this two-handed specialist passive, which we will not be picking up because we intend to go one-hander and shield once we switch classes. Um, but I guess this is the only reason with this class that you would really want, uh, want a two-handed weapon. For now, I guess we'll just equip that one-handed sword? That seems fine. Is that the most dangerous weapon we have? This does 273 fire damage and also shadow damage. And also, and that actually seems pretty good. Yeah, alright. Give me a Grim Hammer of Flames, and then we don't have any armor or anything in here. We do have this. I mean, plus eight core stats is good enough reason. And then <clears throat> we may as well equip these Flame Rings as well, if we're using a weapon that does fire damage. So we should, thanks to our uh, built-up capabilities here. Be able to blaze through the early part of the game pretty easily. Plus 15% fire damage. Also plus 15% fire damage. This is just some stats. Oh, sorry. These are all... I keep thinking that, like, that gloves go in the armor slot for some reason. We only get to equip two of these things, so let's see. Plus four core stats on both of them. This one gives spirit, corral, pet, damage, and defense. Okay. We'll keep that on because we're definitely going to be using a pet. Our pet is going to be very effective. Hey, monkey man. Would you please hold on to this? Nope, it costs 214 gold to put that back in the bank. Okay, we'll, we'll give that back to him presently. Alright, smash up a couple of cave stalkers with the power of physical. Here's the thing, our weapon does non-physical damage. We're probably not actually going to be able to do that very easily. And the reward for it was pretty small. Okay, go to Applewood Grove, get yourself a Katar, and give someone a Mint Fudge. Were we given a Mint Fudge as part of the quest? Because if not, I don't... Okay, well, maybe we'll find one somewhere. See, our gloves cause us to leave acid pools behind sometimes. Do you have a Mint Fudge? You don't. Okay, and then uh, you... Oh, sorry, he's the one who would have the mint fudge if anybody did. I bet we can make one out of a choco bar and a uh, a box of mints. Let's sell him this wooden claymore that I have no intention of using. Boy, that was not worth as much as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, we can't, can't quite afford the chocolate. Hold on a second. Let's harvest some food. And remember, one of our... Uh, one of our trees is just dropping garnet leaves, which, like, uh, gem leaves, which don't really do anything. It exists solely to be sold. So that will get us to where we're going. Now we'll buy the chocolate. And, I mean, this has to work, right? The thing we're trying to make is just chocolate that tastes minty. This must be the recipe. Bam. Easy. Alright, also, while we're down there, we should definitely go and retrieve one of our pets. In the early part of the dungeons, any of the pets we have here will be wildly overpowered relative to the monsters. So let's grab... Um, let's grab the water elemental. What would it cost to insure him? Oh, 75 gold? Absolutely. We probably didn't need to do that just yet, but I don't want anything, uh, anything dumb happening and my pet getting injured and also horribly angry at me. What is this? What is this sparkly? This river flows into the abandoned Riverstone Waterway near Tangledeep. I've heard there are different types of monsters there than in Cedar Caverns, and maybe even undiscovered treasures, but it's probably more dangerous. Should I jump in? You know what? Yeah, let's, uh, let's find out what this is about. <laughs> that's, a very, that's a very good animation. Okay. So they've uh, given us an alternate starting area here, which I appreciate. The beginning of a new game could be a little bit, um, a little bit on the easy side. 
So the song costs 26 energy to turn on. We probably don't want to just walk around with it on because the duration is such that it will uh, it will run out while we're just walking around. We want to we want to start singing when it looks like we're going to be fighting for a little while. We run into several enemies or maybe something tough. So we have a fencing mantis. Doesn't seem particularly powerful. I mean our our pet is going to completely trivialize a lot of this early stuff. We can just blaze through this real quickly. And I don't really have a uh, I don't really have a plan as far as what weapon we'll be using. We weren't able to store anything particularly powerful, so a lot of that is going to be determined by what just like what we happen to find, which means that we're not going to want to spend any job points learning weapon masteries from Dorito until we figure out what kind of weapon we'll, we'll be planning to use in the late game. So that's a decision that will be made in the distant, distant future. Actually, hold on. Those rumors I took, those were for the other... Yeah, those were for Cedar Caverns. Well, whatever. We're just not going to do them. Hold on, that looks like a really obvious secret area. What is your deal? You are phasing and regenerating. Okay. We'll just go ahead and turn on our song here so you can see how it works. Seven turns. Every time we level it up, it refreshes the duration, but because we kill enemies too quickly, unfortunately, it is just going to run out. At some point, there will there will be enemies dangerous enough for this to uh, dangerous enough to be worth us doing this. All right, it definitely feels like we're going for a pretty strength heavy build here, but you can't ignore discipline. We died last time mostly to a large elemental hit because we'd been focusing on strength a lot, so that's a thing to keep in mind. Like, we're definitely going uh, strength first for a while, because, again, best defense is a good murder. Most enemies have very, very low damage potential when dead. Not all of them, but most of them. I like the music here a lot. I think the music in this game, in general, is very, very good. Ah, uh, yeah, we can go ahead and take some, take some Pandora's boxes here. We got a Lucid Orb of Greediness. What does a greedy lucid orb do? Plus 15% gold from monsters. Okay. Again, gold is not like a huge problem, but maybe we can find a use for that eventually. So have we been, feels like we've been pretty thorough here. Nope, in fact, I missed a whole area. We definitely wanna make sure we're being thorough while our flask is really low on charges like this. We wanna build this up as quickly as possible. Oh, I was going to look for the stairs on the map, but it turns out we found them. I wonder if, now that we've been in here, now that we've been in Riverstone Waterway, I wonder if we'll be able to get rumors that are related to it. I'm not going to go into Hildegard's Deli just yet, because I think there's a chance we might be able to get a rumor to go into it. So let's go ahead and drop our current ones, because they're not amazing and we're not going to do them. And then we will see what she offers us. Uh, that's still Applewood Grove. Uh, I guess all of the starter quests are always for Cedar Caverns. That's kind of annoying. Uh, also, we should probably spend some of these job points. Uh, we could learn the Verse of Suppression. So whenever you sing a song, you can weave a verse into it. And you can see there are a couple of different ones available. The Verse of Suppression can root, paralyze, or seal nearby enemies. Um, the Verse of the Elements is really powerful for caster types, and honestly, we'll, we'll make use of it as a paladin as well, because the paladin has lots of like lightning and fire damage. Uh, and then there's also the Verse of Challenges, which you can use against very difficult enemies. You just target an enemy with it, and every time they hit you, you get stronger. For now, I think maybe we'll just hold on to it, hold on to the job points. I don't think any of the stuff we are, we are being offered here is particularly compelling. Alright, so let's go into Hildegard's Deli. Let's see what that looks like. Welcome to my deli! I'm so glad you found me! It's not a great location, I know. Uh, hey there, Hildegard. What's your deal? What a rude question! 
Why, I'm Lady Hildegard, of course. Legendary adventurer and purveyor of delectables. You know what? Let's not push it. It does seem rude. What do you have? Well, you have a butler's bell. I feel strongly about that. Charcuterie, um, hmm. Fifteen turns of being full for no immediate healing seems a little bit rough. Fish and chips is very powerful relative to most food. But to be perfectly honest, I don't know if we want to spend a lot of early game money on food. I think we're going to be okay for a while. That said, we will absolutely destroy all of your stuff. Take that. This character is a bit of a, a bit of a hooligan. You know, vandalism. Who doesn't enjoy a good bit of petty vandalism? Although I suppose it's possible that our hijinks are not going to be taken in the spirit they were offered on account of the huge weapon we're carrying around. We are, we are just wielding a one-handed weapon with nothing in the other hand right now, which is terribly wasteful. As soon as we find a weapon we can put in our other hand or a shield or something, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll take just strength for a couple more levels until we, uh, until we feel like we've built up enough melee power and then we'll experiment a little bit more. This guy is turtling, which just means he gains defenses. Yep. I'll just step away from the big shield. Alright, so right now we're wearing Robes of the Wolf because this is the first armor we picked up. But, my feeling is Hide Armor of Deflection is probably going to do us a little bit better. It's a fair amount of physical resistance, and it still has 5% dodge on it. It's almost as much dodge as the robe without, uh, without any of the downside. Oh, hold on, we do have another weapon. At some point, I picked up a Katar. Well, the good news is, this is a claw-type weapon, so claw-type weapons have a smaller dual-wield penalty than other weapons. And also, it does heal you when it crits. Honestly, a paladin that is uh, that is using a claw and a shield would be pretty tough to kill. Especially if we make sure that we prioritize our crit chance through armor and, uh, and level ups. You know, I don't actually have a plan for what the next... Thing, what the next skill we're going to pick up is, I should probably figure that out so that I know when we have enough points for it. Uh, Glorious Battler. Do we want to learn this? When defeating a non-worthless enemy with a song active, the song increases in intensity. You know, that is probably worthwhile. Uh, let's pick up Verse of Challenges. If we run into anything dangerous, this will help keep us alive. Uh, and then Furious Crescendo is also very, very good. A wide slashing attack that grows in range and power based on your song's intensity. It does consume your song, but as you can see there, it really can do a tremendous amount of damage. It's another good, uh, another good get me out of trouble quickly type ability. Right, these early floors just seem very small. Very small in comparison to some of the stuff we were seeing in the later game. Yeah, okay, this is thorough enough. Let's keep moving. It is important to remember we were having kind of a cavalier attitude toward character growth with our last uh, our last character. We probably should not feel that way with this one because we are not overpowered. We'll get there. But we're not there yet. Ralja and Seal. Humble Wandering Chef. Oh yes, please, teach me to make food. Ice Cream Sundae and Gelato. Uh, ice Cream Sundaes are phenomenal. So that's that's something I'm very glad to see. So it's just any dessert type item. So some chocolate and some milk and a banana, basically. And then we may as well start building up our supply of campfire meat. I know it didn't save us last time, but this time we're going to have a reasonable amount of damage reduction. We will, we will have more opportunities to use the healing items. Alright, a chocolate bar on the ground. Definitely a thing you want to potentially eat. Well, you know what? Maybe this is... <laughs> Maybe this is me being kind of a chubby dude. But if I found a chocolate bar on the ground and it was still wrapped... I probably, I probably would be willing to eat that. 
You know, it's, it's wrapped. What could possibly be wrong with it? Okay, a rope strap of sparks is probably... Is this going to be a better offhand? It does have a slightly higher weapon power, but it's going to be less accurate, and it's going to have a higher damage penalty. You know what? We're fine. We're fine with the claw of the offhand. I'm just saying, like, if you found a full-size Snickers bar on the ground, and it didn't look like... Oh, he leveled up. I was like, I leveled up. Why didn't I get the screen? But yeah, part of the part of the value of pulling a pet through the early dungeon like this is that we're giving him a chance to gain some uh, valuable XP when it's not dangerous. It'd be very, very hard to keep pets alive. So they need every bit of help they can get. A developed pet is totally worth it. I've I've mostly trash talked pets at this point. I feel like, but a developed pet is totally worthwhile and add an awful lot of power to your run. Uh, you know what? Yeah, we're still we're still taking these for sure. That's the way up to the next actual floor. I suppose you could say you know, the fact that the candy bar is wrapped doesn't necessarily mean nobody tampered with it. What if they like, I don't, what if they got a syringe full of deadly candy poison? and syringed it right through the wrapper. You wouldn't even know. And I mean, like, listen, it's possible. But you have two options in this situation. One of those options is to live in fear, and the other one is to have a free candy bar. I know which one I'm picking. The brutal mold-infested vermin uh, apparently does not understand how bombs work. You have to put them near the thing you want to blow up. Jelly Grotto. Okay, well, I'm I am down to explore the Jelly Grotto. You know what I like a lot about going this way instead of through Cedar Caverns? Uh, no spiny maze, it looks like. Because, screw that noise. One thing I do not like about this place is that it's hard to tell. This tile is impassable, this particular bush. But this tile right next to it is not. And listen, they're both green. I just look at those and I see two green things and I'm like, well, why don't they behave the same way? I can't be bothered to, like, look at stuff in detail. But imagine, who has the time for that? Okay, Jelly Grotto's a nice, easy, uh... Nice, easy side area. Get you some early job points. Oh, yeah, also we can do this thing. We can look for his, uh, his jelly friend and get ourselves some free seeds, which I think we might even be able to use. Well, that was easy. Jelly, <laughs> jelly Boo's like 10 feet away. I don't remember if we have a, uh, a slot open in the farm, but even if we don't, we could chop down one of the full-grown trees for the... Uh, for the XP and the job points, and then just grow a new one. It'll have plenty of time to reach maturity before this character is anywhere dangerous, where we might actually need the stuff that the trees drop. Boy, we sure are finding a lot of mints. I feel like the dungeon is trying to tell me something, and I don't much like the implications. Okay, Shining Dazzle Leaf Seeds. Well... Let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and go back to town. We'll see if those are useful. We'll chop a thing down. We'll maybe uh, maybe learn some more class skills. Definitely, at the very least, go down here and harvest. Our trees are producing stuff all the time. Do we have an open... Hold on. We do not have an open slot. Okay, so we should cut something down. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the Dazzle Leaf, personally. I think probably that's the one that goes. Spice Bark. Here we go. Uh, 105 job points. Yeah, totally. I don't know if a sword is the most efficient way to do that. I think it's probably even less efficient when you remember that the sword is just art and that the weapon we're actually holding is a hammer. A hammer seems like a terrible way to chop down a tree. Uh, let's grab Furious Crescendo. 
and we may as well start learning the other stuff. I think we got the things that are really important. The Song of Endurance will eventually matter once we're in the part of our uh, part of our run where we're trying to tough, uh, toughen up a lot. Okay. That's true, we could learn some weapon mastery, except I have no idea what weapons I want to use yet. And we should probably check the, the rumor monger here. Okay, Riverstone Waterway. That's only 73 XP. That's actually a really bad reward. And we'll take it, because it's convenient to do, but it's, it's weird how bad that reward is. Let's just kill a thing in Riverstone Waterway 5. We don't really have to do a lot of strategizing here. Well, I think we're ready to move up to the next floor. That's not the right staircase. Hold on. Do we know where the right staircase is, actually? Yes, it's all the way in the upper right. So you can see, this floor is already rated very easy. Uh, mostly what that is, I think, is a comparison of the floor's level to your level. It's not like measuring anything about my character to determine that, except for the number. Okay, Water Stalker, that needs to stop. Enemies with ranged attacks. Needs to stop. We are probably going to have to actually use a flask charge or something here. Uh, you know what? Sure, I'll keep taking those. I'm not done with those those yet. Those crabs uh, paralyze us and remove our ability to attack, which is super annoying. Especially since this class doesn't really have any other options for dealing damage. We can't just like switch over to the spells for a turn, because there are no spells. Right, I'm fairly confident there's nothing down there. It's easy to take for granted the um, the actual like very impressive flexibility of our last class, but honestly, I think that that was a really cool one. I didn't uh, necessarily make a great accounting of it, but that seems like a really cool one, and it gives you a lot of options. What is your deal? Why bother fighting swords and bows when you could throw things I sell at your enemies instead? Uh, yeah, sure. Actually, that sounds like a really good idea. Let's buy some things we can hurl at people. And I know I'm kind of low on health, but also we're so close to a level up. I'm going to try to preserve flask charges in any way I can, despite the fact that we're already at the soft cap. Probably for much the same reason that I... Uh, that I pick up these power-ups, even when we don't need them at all. It just feels like the efficient way to play, even if it is, objectively, not any more efficient than doing anything else. Hey, River Spirit, get him! Alright, we should probably try not to get killed here. If we're going to do this in a way that, uh, in a way that is very efficiency-focused. Especially since we're getting free energy and stamina all the time, I should be using it. But you can see, the songs can be a little bit of a pain to maintain. They're very much a, uh, a thing you do when you are fighting more difficult enemies. Do you want to maybe attack there, buddy? Okay. The enemy had not figured out that we were fighting yet. And apparently, the pet doesn't use its own judgment for what, a, what is a target, and doesn't use my judgment, it uses the judgment of the target. Uh, I think... So we often have the flask running when we are in dangerous situations. Citrus is certainly valuable, but running out of stamina and energy can be so dangerous. I think we're gonna, we're gonna take tea leaf. Well... No, let's try this the other way. It's gonna be citrus tea this time. Okay, he seems to have that under control. Just let him, uh, let him figure out his business. Oh, hey, splint mail of bone crabs. You know how I feel about armor of bone crabs. 
Plus, higher physical resistance, higher damage reduction. Defensively, this is probably almost as good as the other armor. And then also, it makes bone crabs. Ow. Uh, you know what armor doesn't protect you from is walking stupidly onto lava. Alright, well, I guess let's go check out the pet shop. I'm pretty sure all the pet shop sells is eggs that produce random temporary pets. Not exactly compelling. But we should go look, at least. Got more. I've got certified free-range monster eggs for sale. Hatch one and the monster will love you forever, probably. You know, for a certain definition of forever. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother with these. I am gonna bother with stealing all of his savory mole. I don't even actually know what mole is. Let's have a look. Maybe, maybe the description will solve this problem for me. Somehow this sauce keeps getting tastier no matter what I add to it. It's like I can't make a mistake. That, I do not think, is a good, uh, a good way to think about food. Be careful. You can definitely make a mistake. I'm just going to jam everything in my cupboard into this. Then again, what do I know about cooking? Uh, wait, where was the actual staircase? Okay, it's over here to the right. Well, we're almost already back to Duke Dirtbeak, uh, which is where we're going to get probably our first couple of pieces of actually good loot. So that might uh, that might help us decide what we want to do weapon mastery wise. Uh, ice daggers and phasing. Okay, so I can tell already this guy's going to be annoying. Let's go ahead and throw up the Song of Might, and then maybe a verse of challenges oh we have to be a little closer you know how we could get closer we could execute a highland charge nope never mind that only goes in straight lines execute a highland charge ow okay so every time we take damage from him we're building up so you can see here uh, we are leveling up our song we're getting these additional effects and every time we level the song up it resets the the duration That went down a little bit faster than I was thinking. A penetrating wild battle axe. That does sound like a pretty good weapon. 216 damage. Basic attack damage modified by plus or minus 35% at random. I guess that's pretty wild. But it's a very significant upgrade over the Katar. It's not quite as good as our main weapon, so I, I don't want to main hand it. But I think this is a reasonable thing to do. I probably should have taken a drink from the flask there. Just like wasted a charge for no re no good reason. All right, I don't know exactly how many of those we're going to take, but uh, it's going to be at least a few more. I mean, it's just free job points, right? And honestly, I don't know if there's a character resource that I think is more important to get quickly than job points. They matter an awful lot. Kind of weird how um, how extremely not aggressive all the monsters are being. We're just walking right up next to them. And they're like, please, please don't notice me. Just trying to go about my day. I'm gonna make it to the grocery store and get back home. Boy, the uh, water elemental is taking an awful lot of explosions directly to his face. Okay, well I was gonna help. Clearly you didn't need it, but I was I was thinking about it. I was gearing myself up, I was thinking, SB, this is your moment. I mean, not right now, obviously, but like in a couple of moments, it could be your moment. When that happens, don't you want to be ready? And, since we're still speaking theoretically, since I was not required to help, let's say the answer is yes. I totally do want to be ready. Okay. Well, we can Furious Crescendo, but that's it. Now we have to just wait for the Paralyzed to wear off. Those crabs can be very frustrating for certain classes to fight. I was not expecting to one-shot it. It is kind of nice, especially after a, uh, after a 
sudden and brutal and greatly demoralizing failure. It is kind of nice now and then to just have a situation where you can just like rampage through a place. I see when you're blind. See, that right there, that's the kind of reason I love Bone Crabs. Bone Crab didn't even do anything. All he all he did was absorb a debuff for me. But think of how annoying that debuff would have been. Alright, we're almost done here. You can see the floor is still rated tricky relative to us, so we want to level up at least one time before leaving. I think we are ready to handle Duke Dirtbeak, though. He's actually remarkably easy for his level. I think the fight is almost entirely about just getting you to recognize that there's a place in the terrain where you are, uh, you are better suited to fight his whole team because you're less likely to get overwhelmed. Definitely take one more level of strength. We might continue on after this. I don't know. It might be time to start switching up to uh, some of the other stuff. Obviously, physical defense does matter a great deal. Trusting my pets to handle that guy. Floor is still marked as tricky. We might be slightly underleveled, perhaps. I mean, there are certain th certainly things we could do about that. All right, I think we've been thorough enough. <clears throat> what have we here? A summoner. Okay. So yeah, you can see just a little bit of advancement with one character makes life so much easier with the second character. Like. Having a good pet right away is such a huge benefit. Alright, then we steal Duke Dirtbeak's lunch, which is composed of peppers, monster chow, a big bag of grain, and stew in a sandwich. Gotta say, I'm a little baffled by his choice of refreshments. So obviously, we'll get up here, we'll, uh, we'll embarrass the Duke quite quickly. I suppose we could take a moment here and learn some abilities. Uh, let's go ahead and grab Glorious Battler. So Verse of the Elements is definitely worth taking. The Song of Spirit is also totally worth taking. I think this is a really, really powerful skill. And then we may as well grab the Verse of Suppression, even though it's not like super great. It is only 100 job points. And then we're going to go ahead and swap over. So we're not that far off of it. 350 plus 400 plus 100. I don't know if we'll go straight to Paladin. It might totally be worth veering off into a third class to pick up a thing or two. Just remember, we do have limited space on our bars. Like you don't, you don't get a lot of benefit out of learning like four full classes because you just can't use all of those abilities. But we know his whole deal. I, ca I caught some troublemakers. I'm gonna tear you up. I hate your rug. He thinks the rug is great because he's stupid. Can birds see in color? Oh yeah, birds Birds can definitely see in color, right? Because they have plumage for the purpose of attract, attracting other birds. I was just wondering if maybe he thought that that looked a lot better than it did. We could utilize the, um, the bottleneck here, but we can also just kind of go straight for it because we're actually still pretty powerful. Uh, let's step out of the group of them a little bit so that we can execute a furious crescendo. That actually hits everybody. Uh, that was actually a lot of damage. 384 damage crit. Uh, caused him to go into monologue mode. Which, as you probably know, means that you're doing a pretty good job against your villain. And the water spirit killed him almost single-handedly. <laughs> I mean, I knew he was going to be good. Listen, I'm not going to try to tell you that I didn't have any sense that our water spirit was going to be effective here. But I am surprised at how good. Oh, hey, these spikes don't actually do damage. Did he install fake spikes in his uh, lair just to make it look cool? 
I gotta admit, I kind of admire that. Alright, let's go ahead and go back down. Let's see if we are offered any, uh... Offered any rumors that make our choice of branch a little bit easier. What do you think? Where should we go? I just hit I'll take it without seeing what that was. It was probably fine. Uh, two Aracudas with using the power of physical. Well, we don't really... Like, I like 215 job points as a weapon, or as a reward. This is not that hard to do. We totally have physical weapons. But we can't necessarily guarantee that we're going to get the finishing blows on stuff because the pet might kill them, and I'm just not going to worry about this. That would be kind of a pain to, to deal with. And you want me to find the bandit storeroom in Riverstone Waterway 4. Did I miss a thing? Take no more than 193 steps in the dungeon. Okay. I'll take this. We can go back to Waterstone. Or, we can go back to Riverstone Waterway 4. Okay, go up here. I don't know, man. This might be too many steps. So, okay. It's the closer staircase. Saved a couple there. We are well on our way. Uh, right, the stairs down to Riverstone Waterway 4 are right next to the stairs up to 6. And then... There is, in fact, a staircase that I did not notice. It's pretty unusual for a, uh... Yeah, this is a reasonable way to do that. Pretty unusual for a floor to have this many up staircases on it. Is this what we're looking for? It sure is. Congratulations, we did it. And then also, we get to steal all of their stuff. Sadly. I mean, they're low-level bandits, right? Well, what were the odds they were going to have anything good in the first place? I'll say this. It is a lot of food. So we're not being offered any rumors that help us make our choice of branches. What was that thing I accepted without actually reading it? Go fight a guy in Cedar Caverns? Yeah, whatever. Okay, uh, let's pick up the Verse of the Elements. May as, we should probably go and uh, harvest our trees again. We're blazing through the days here, because the, the dungeon levels are very easy. Hopefully this will hold out this way to some extent. We should also probably check our inventory and make sure that we're actually using all the best stuff we have. Uh, it's going to be hard for us to to pass up these accessories anytime soon, but the uh, the armor we're wearing is only fine. It's not certainly not great. I should definitely go and put that ring back in the bank. Who knows when we'll need another flame ring. I want to store these lucid orbs. Honestly, frost scale might be really good for us. Since we'll be in melee with monsters a lot. Gain temporary resist bonus after taking elemental damage, also pretty good. Uh, yeah, I think we're actually going to be using all of our lucid orbs. They all seem really strong. Uh, from you, we will simply buy all of the meats. And you know what? Bananas and apples are also fine. From you, we will probably buy nothing. Uh, we do need to build our, our supply of teleportation scrolls back up, because I foolishly lost them all. Irresponsibly, you might say. Okay, well, I guess let's just go Fungal Caves this time, because that's not the one we did last time. But to be honest with you, I don't remember a ton about the different enemies that are, uh, that are in the different branches. Obviously, there are probably, like, mushrooms around here. I think that's a pretty safe bet. Make some campfire fruit. Sometimes you find yourself in a situation 
where health is not enough. You need ability ability resources because you need to use an ability to get the hell out of whatever situation you've gotten yourself into. And in those times, campfire fruit is there for you. Uh, this sucks. He's just causing a lot of trouble. That said, we're still at a point where our pet is a little bit stronger than the, uh, the surrounding dungeon. So we don't have to strain about it too much. So we do have these uh, hostile fungal columns. I have to be a little bit careful about them. Because if you deal damage to them, they will sometimes do stuff like that. Attempt to start a fire on you and then blow up. I believe I've also seen them like, ooh, a lucid orb of bone crabs. Get to add bone crab summoning to any piece of gear we want. Actually, I think it only happens on armor, but to any piece of armor we want. I think I've also seen those mushrooms uh, reproduce rapidly in response to physical disturbance, which then just makes your life harder and harder. Fortunately, we are using weapons that have controllable targeting, but if we had like an ax or something, uh, there's not really a lot you can do. Sometimes you're just gonna hit mushrooms and weird stuff is gonna happen. Yeah, man, it's really nice to have a, an overleveled pet. Actually, we're getting to the point where I don't think he is even overleveled anymore. Rex, right, I think he was only level. Five or six? Then again, their levels don't uh, don't uh, scale in exactly the same way that player levels do. Okay. It's, it's just not a very large floor, it turns out. Take that. F fungus. Right. For a moment there, I forgot what that thing was called even though it has been on the screen constantly. Uh, I did absolutely attack it accidentally the first time. I don't know what, I don't know what our pet is off doing, but let's give him a little bit of a push. Oh, feels like I should probably not be inside of this. I think we're gonna take a, an explosion or two here. Oh, that, that turned out not to be that bad. Found ourselves a totally normal round shield. We're still looking for a good shield. So we do want to have one once we switch to Paladin. The Paladin class has not just an affinity for shield, but also a couple of attacks that scale with the effectiveness of your shield. It's pretty important that we find a good one. Find or buy. I mean, I guess buying counts as you find it in the store. But yeah, like even the casino might be a good place for us to get a good one. what happens when I just hold the button. It is very common to walk around by holding the direction button rather than assessing each move individually. Just go that way until. But every once in a while you get very mildly punished for it. Let's take one more of these. And I think I'm gonna grab... Uh, do we want a little bit of discipline? Buff duration increases with discipline. I'm going to grab one more level of strength. We don't want to just wait until it seems like we're starting to be in danger from uh, magical damage before starting to pick up discipline, though. You want to ideally have reacted to that situation before it actually occurs. Because if you don't, uh, if you get into a situation where the elemental attacks are actually really dangerous and you don't yet have a way of dealing with them, there's a real good chance that you, uh, instead of learning and getting to deal with them, you instead immediately explode. And then whoever the Tangle Deep Janitor is... Oh, did I get paralyzed? Well, that's unfortunate. Then whoever the Tangle Deep Janitor is has to clean you up off the floors, and that's very inconsiderate of you. You guys got enough to do as it is, you know?
All right, where are we at here? 50 minutes. I was wondering if there was enough time to just run up and flatten Duke Dirtbeak again. I think probably we don't want to do that. Oh, that'll just be a little bit too much time. But I do think that we're going to get through this class. So let's go ahead and go back. We've, we're wasting only 26 job points this way. That's a pretty good value. It does always feel like a real shame when you... Um, Old Amber Station 9, that's a little inconvenient. When you are planning to switch to a new class and you accidentally, you forget that you're doing it and you end up generating like several hundred job points that you'll never get any benefit out of. There's an ornate chest in the lava pit. Well, again, that's more of a thing of convenience than because I actually want the reward. And you'll give 122 job points. Yeah, that seems fine. So, Percy can change your jobs. Uh, he can also reset your stats from level up so you can fix them if you feel like you've made an error. Uh, the amount that it costs to change your job is based on your current level. It is 100 gold per level. It might also go up each time you do it. But it's relatively cheap right now and then we'll probably find a job, job uh, change scrolls at some point as well. So... Now that we have some offensive and defensive buffing options and a movement ability, I'm thinking about going into Paladin. Paladin lets your shields be more effective immediately. Uh, blocking gives you more damage on your, uh, your offensive abilities. And eventually you can learn Sanctuary, which just makes you invisible briefly. Or invincible briefly. It if it sounds really good, congratulations. You've assessed that correctly. It's a really nice thing to be able to do. Uh... Paladin actually has a few more direct offensive abilities than Edgethane does. Stuff like Smite Evil or Divine Fury where you just shoot lightning at people or the Blessed Hammer. Uh, it's not quite the, the Diablo 2 Blessed Hammer, but it's still pretty good. Uh, so this will increase our offensive capability and our defensive capability. It has this really cool thing where uh, when you do any movement abilities... While wearing heavy armor, you just, like, slam enemies with the strength of your big heavy metal body. But we might want to grab something else before we sw swap into Paladin. Not just because we might need the abilities, but because there's going to come a point when we're out of job points to spend on other stuff. Right? Like, there's only three class trials. There's only a couple levels of weapon mastery. We will, if, at some point, be gathering more job points than we need. And that feels inefficient and wasteful. So, uh, as far as options, we could go Brigand to pick up a couple more movement abilities. Brigand has a couple of really good ones. Uh, Escape Artist moves you and stuns a nearby enemy. Cloak and Dagger is a is technically a movement ability. Uh, we've seen this from bandit enemies. In fact, we got killed by this, eff uh, effectively. It swaps you and it deals a whole bunch of bonus damage to uh, the thing you swapped with. It is also a movement ability, so it will trigger the heavy weapon stomp. Uh, Firebomb is just a big bomb. It's a good source of weapon power based elemental damage, so we might want to pick it up. Honestly, becoming a brigand briefly seems like it might be, uh, might be a smart move. As you observe enemies, you'll periodically find and mark their vital points. We only have four support skill slots. We have one that we want to keep from Edge Thane because it makes our songs way more effective. Uh, both of the both of the passives from Paladin are really nice: armor training and shield mastery, which is a fifteen percent stun chance when hitting enemies. Uh, so we only really have one uh, support slot left. Sneak attack I don't think is necessarily great. I mean, it lets you kill uh, random enemies that you're running around, uh, random enemies that you encounter while running around on floors very easily, but those are not generally the dangerous enemies. The dangerous enemies are things you're going to have to hit a whole bunch of times. The sneak attack's probably not going to be that, uh, not going to cut that much time off of those battles. Detect weakness, though, might be, might be useful. So this is going to cause that same effect that enemy archers sometimes do on us, where there, uh, one, there'll be an arrow on one side of the enemy and you have to attack from that side to hit, uh, for bonus damage. If we have enough movement abilities that we can be moving into those places while still accomplishing other things, then it's not too hard to take advantage of. Yeah, let's let's go Brigand for a little while. 
We'll pick up a couple abilities and then we'll go into Paladin from there. And we may as well check the uh, the vendors here. Scroll of Lightning Protection, probably not worth picking up. And hell yeah, food. All right, we have a couple of Butler's Bells. I'm going to forget to use them, as I always do. So let's go ahead and do it now while I'm thinking about it. Okay, that one was not very good. Sometimes you get very high quality food from them. Other times, it's a fruit bowl and a fish. Okay, that was also a pretty bad one. Eat coffee at least has its uses. And it's a thing that NPCs occasionally ask for for quest reasons. Oh, every time we come back to town, we should also harvest. All right, so let's figure out exactly what we do want. Again, we have limited uh, limited slots available to us. So, Firebomb is potentially useful. Um, we... Yeah, I, th I think we probably want to learn Firebomb. We probably want to learn Cloak and Dagger. And honestly, what does Shadow Step do? So it lets you just move to any, any space within three. Bleeds enemies when you arrive... Honestly, that's pretty versatile. A lot of the movement abilities have pretty tight restrictions on the way you can move with them. Like, they only go in a straight line, or they only go to spaces that are exactly three away from you. Shadow Step is... pretty good. Okay, so we'll pick up, like, 300, 250, 250, and 250. It's actually kind of a lot of uh, job points that we're committing there, and then we also want to detect weakness. It's all right. We're coming by the job points very, very quickly. It shouldn't be a big deal. It does mean we will not be a paladin this episode. So I do see those stairs. To, or the Yeah, the stairs. Don't worry. What are these? Are these up? These are to the flooded temple. So a side area. We'll have extra job points for us. Also, I gotta remember. Okay, there were no, no requirements on this thing to on either of the quests we have in the Fungal Caves. Somewhere around here, right there, in fact, there is that modeled Sandjaw. So he is resistant to everything, but less resistant to... It's a little annoying that he's very resistant to fire, because we are pretty fire-based at the moment. But our weapons are powerful enough... Never mind, I was going to say our weapons are powerful enough for us to just muddle through. But actually, he's really not taking very much damage. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and perform a little song here. I mean, our pet is hitting him for free while he's focused on us. We'll throw on a verse of challenges. And we'll just let him scale us up over time. A tireless pebble pouch of explosions. That seems like an unsafe pouch of pebbles. I may as well step aside here and do the flooded temple real quickly. Must you interrupt me? Not everyone is eager for a conversation, you know. I'm quite busy scouting for precious herbs, so be gone. I could help with that, despite your attitude. Mm, I didn't quite expect that. Sorry, I'm just not used to people. Don't take it personally. I actually could use a bit of help. The chamber above us has water with special properties, and I theorize that a special type of herb could grow there. But, let me guess, you can't deal with the monsters? Well, yes, of course. Do I look like a vicious warrior to you? Though, even if I were, getting up there is only half the problem. My theory is that flow-empowered plant growth in the water could yield a special herb. But I don't have any magic like that. Flow-empowered plant growth. Well, that's a little inconvenient. We don't have anything like that either. Uh, so as long as you have a way to grow a plant, it shouldn't be hard. Well, we could certainly job change into somebody who could grow a plant. Oh god, Spinies, we didn't escape them after all. Yeah, several, there are actually a couple of different classes that have the ability to produce a plant. Uh, but not us. 
We could swap into one just to get this. Uh, we could swap into like the Floramancer just to get this done, learn a single ability. But I'm not sure that uh, that the reward is actually worth the job points that we would have to spend learning the thing. I guess I can just look up what it is. the The rewards for these little side area quests are not random. They they are the same from run to run, so it is totally possible to just find out what the uh, what we would get from it. And who knows, there, there are some things that I can think of that I would be willing to pay some gold and some job points for. A buckler of loyalty, the wolf, and companions. Your corral pad heals for 15% when you defeat a non-trivial enemy and it gets damage and defense. You know what? This is not amazing, but maybe that's a shield worth purchasing. Let's say that's a rank 3 shield, so it has nice high block chance. The block really removes a lot of damage. You can block any attack. Even even magic stuff. Uh, this is a slightly less good shield, but it has plus 10% elemental resists, which is honestly probably better than this cavalcade of things. Yeah, alright, we'll take that. It's not it's not an amazing shield, but if we end up a paladin without having found a better one, we'll be glad we did that. And it was not very expensive. All right, so I think we can just go and uh, go upstairs, clear the area. I think just doing, uh, just killing all the enemies will give us points for clearing. Uh, we don't have to actually complete the quest, and then we can come back as a person who can grow uh, grow plants and do the uh, do the quest bit at our leisure if it turns out that it is indeed worth doing. All right, back up to 26 charges. Probably there aren't even going to be that many enemies up here. Go ahead and start singing our song, just in case. Boy, these songs do not last very long. If you're not in, like, pitched battle the entire time, it's really hard to keep them up. God, what a good pet. I think I have spent a lot of time in this game running with a water elemental as a pet. So, like, there's a type of damage they're completely immune to. They do so much damage. They self-heal. Really, really fantastic. Like, with him standing there, he is protecting me from the ice shards because they deal water damage, which he is immune to. Oh. Blades in my loot space. A frost ring of warmth. That doesn't seem like it would be very good at being a frost ring or at being a thing of warmth. We miss somebody, or am I just wrong? Oh no, okay, there is at least one enemy alive. So yeah, we can get the reward without having to actually do the quest. That's pretty weird. Three runic garbs and a big hammer. That chest definitely tells a story. I'm not sure exactly what that story is. Oh, right, we can use our... Oh, I thought we could use our teleporter just to warp back to the entrance of the side area. You usually can. Hmm. Ooh, retrieve the Aegis of a Hundred Eyes. It is said that the Pandora's box in Old Amber Station has a purple shield in it. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, you have a Shadow King in your hammer. Go deal with it. Honestly, sounds like kind of a pain. Uh, yeah, no thanks. And the vine's been quiet. Okay, yeah, the existence of a purple shield is definitely exciting. That's maybe where we can start things off tomorrow. Uh, for right now, I think we're going to call it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I swear to you, I am going to do everything in my power to have this character die... Well, I mean, not at all would be nice, but if, if we do die, at least a less ignominious death than the last one. So come back next time tomorrow to see how quickly I break that promise, and we'll see you then.